In a recent video, we compared the four main warships of the Clone Wars era Republic Navy to determine which ship was the best. But just because a warship was well designed didn't necessarily mean you would want to serve on it. With that in mind, in this video, we'll be comparing the same four ships from a different perspective, looking at which of them was the best to serve on. We'll be comparing crew size, the location of crew decks, the durability of the four ships, and the overall survivability of your average crew aboard each vessel. Without further ado, Let's begin. Attention, Sergeant on deck. As before, we're going to start by looking at the runt of the litter, the Architons class light cruiser. This ship has no stated crew complement in Legends, but in canon, it's been established that it required only 100 personnel, meaning that crew aboard these ships would have plenty of living space. Truthfully, we know very little about the location or condition of the crew decks on these cruisers, but then again, even if we did, it wouldn't really matter. The Architons was a fragile and rather small ship, and crew stationed anywhere on the vessel had to worry about hull damage and whatnot. The biggest issue with serving on an Architons was the cruiser's durability, or lack thereof. Consider the following scene from Star Wars The Clone Wars. In this scene, an Architons wades into a fight with some separatist ships and, in less than 30 seconds, takes catastrophic damage to its four sections and begins listing out of control. That damage wasn't caused by collision with that one space wreck either. In the shot immediately after the wreck passes out of view, the Architons is perfectly fine and apparently didn't even collide with the wreckage. Those separatist turbo lasers just chewed that poor thing up and spat it out in record time. All told, these ships weren't a good posting for those who valued their lives. They were just too fragile, especially since virtually every separatist ship had the firepower to shred an Architons like this. Next up, we had the ship we said was the best Republic vessel overall in our last video, the Acclimator class assault ship. The Acclimator only required a crew of 700, though they had to share the ship with up to 16,000 embarked clones. However, embarked troops were likely housed in separate quarters, while most of the crew of the Acclimator was clustered around the bridge stalk. This main tower was exposed to enemy firepower, but it was actually still less dangerous than postings on most Republic ship bridges. That's because stock model Acclimator class assault ships didn't have windows, instead opting for heavily armored command suites and comprehensive holographic displays on the bridge. On top of this, the Acclimator was incredibly durable, much more than its size would suggest. The RAS Prosecutor was able to stand up to fire from a Lucra Hulk class battleship for several minutes despite already being badly damaged and literally no surviving crew left on board, apart from four clone commandos who had to fight a whole droid army just to get some of the turbo lasers working again. Fully operational assault ships had powerful shields and thick hull armor, giving their crews some pretty solid odds of survival. Now we can move on to the poster children of the Republic Navy, the Star Destroyers. The first Star Destroyer we'll be examining was the Veneta class Star Destroyer, and we'll be upfront with this one. You really, really didn't want to serve on a Veneta. It's bad enough that it required a crew of 7,400, meaning that the ship's relatively small living quarters would have been pretty packed, but the ship's crew decks were almost all clustered around the edges of the vessel. In other words, the ship's crew lived and worked in the parts of the ship most likely to suffer severe hull breaches. Those crew members who didn't work along the edges of the Veneta manned the hangars, which were an even more dangerous place to be. The potential for catastrophic accidents aside, the main hangar of the Veneta class Star Destroyer was notorious for being a 500 meter long weak spot with poor armoring and no point defense coverage whatsoever making it easy for enemy fighters, or the force forbid, enemy bombers to waltz on in whenever the hangar doors opened and plow into the hangar deck. As we've said before, the Veneta class Star Destroyer was a carrier and its use as a frontline battleship was an atrocious tactical decision. The ship had massive weak spots and most of its crew worked in and around them as their ships flew into the thick of battles they weren't cut out for. A Veneta was hands down one of the worst ships to be stationed on during the Clone Wars. 
But what about the Venator's cooler cousin, the Victory class Star Destroyer? Well, not only did the Victory require a small crew of only about 5,000 personnel, but it was also much more durable. We can't speak to the quality of the Victory's crew decks and don't know for sure where on the ship they were distributed, but based on the later Imperial class Star Destroyer and the Victory's appearance, we would assume that most of them were clustered in the ship's bulky stacked decks below the main bridge stalk, which is much better than having them running along the ship's edges. The bridge section of the Victory, despite still being exposed, was also much more durable and well shielded than those of the Venator and Architans, which is another win for crew safety. Additionally, unlike the Venator, the Victory was actually built to be a frontline brawler. It could take a pummeling without suffering catastrophic damage and it had no major structural weaknesses to speak of. They were so well armoured, in fact, that they were still classified as heavily armoured decades later during the Galactic Civil War despite major advances in weapons and armour. The Victory was slow to manoeuvre and wasn't hard for separatist ships to catch out of formation, but even then it was hard to destroy especially since the Victory had some truly staggering firepower to bite back with. Overall, even though being posted aboard a Victory meant you'd usually be closest to the fiercest fighting, it was a posting that came with a significant chance of survival. Now that we've given an overview of these four ships, let's rank how desirable their crew positions were. Right at the bottom, to nobody's surprise, we have the Venator. These Star Destroyers just weren't cut out for the job they were asked to perform, and their crews were in constant peril due to the poor positioning and mediocre defences of the decks they lived and worked on. The Venator was decently durable despite its flaws, but any amount of significant damage these ships suffered would still incur significant crew casualties. Just above the Venator is the Architans, which we're ranking low for similar reasons to the Venator. It just wasn't durable. The Architans was a lightweight, fighting a war in which most ships were heavy hitters, which not only limited its utility, but also meant that its crew was always at high risk. The next two ships were both leagues better than both the Architans and the Venator, since both were rather durable and much more survivable than our other entries. We're going to give the second place spot to the Acclimator. In our last video, we established that the Acclimator was the best ship in the Republic Navy overall, but in our opinion, it's edged out by the victory when the main metric is crew survivability. The Acclimator was tough and well designed, but it wasn't quite as tough as our number one ship, which is, of course, the victory. The general lack of weaknesses and the sheer toughness of the victory is what makes it the best Republic ship to be posted on, in our opinion. The victory wasn't invincible, but its armor was so tough that it could hold its own in a fight decades after it technically became obsolete. Also worth noting is its tremendous firepower, which also played a role in making it a fairly safe posting. After all, you're less likely to have to worry about hull breaches if the enemy ship has already been reduced to its component parts. So there you have it. If you're in the Republic Navy during the Clone Wars, a Victory class Star Destroyer was generally the best place to be. But that's just our assessment. What do you think? Do you disagree with our rankings? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.